Okay, uh, still continuing with the application in security and malware of uh, various types. Um, now, um, previously we discussed uh, mobile code or executable code uh, that uh, gets run on your machine. Um, and I mean, I, I used a variety of examples and one of them uh, that we addressed a while ago was the, the X um, uh, terminal emulation system. Interestingly, um, from a technical perspective, because it inverts the uh, normal client-server model, the, the client, in the case of X, is the uh, mainframe or mini-computer, and the server is, in fact, your computer, uh, which is not the usual uh, way we look at it, but in, in that case, in the case of X, as a uh, terminal emulation, uh, the mainframe is uh, sort of requesting a service in terms of the user interface from your computer. Um, but in order to do that, uh, I, it's a lovely example of you know, inverting that uh, client-server architecture and therefore more fully defining client-server architecture, but it also means um, it, it does that by asking you to run code on your machine. So again, you know, possibility of security vulnerabilities in regard to that. So, uh, but uh, what I really want to talk about here is another uh, type of uh, um, code mobility. Uh, in this case, the uh, uh, well, uh, Microsoft's uh, DCOM uh, model, Distributed Common Object Model. Now, uh, again, this is uh, going back to the days of uh, uh, people were thinking that we were going to have this distributed computing, that the, the web uh, browser was going to be the platform. Everything was going to run on the web. Uh, you would have applets, um, and you would put the applets together, and the different functions from the different applets could be used to build larger applications, like having an entire word processor, having uh, a, you know, a spreadsheet, having, uh, well, whatever kind of program you wanted uh, made up from these applets that were being called from, from different places. And uh, part of the the infrastructure that uh, Windows was going to be that Microsoft was going to be using for Windows and other systems um, was going to be uh, this DCOM model. Now I'm sure that it lives on, and so you know we may uh, you may want to look into this more fully in terms of the details and the technical details and how to manage it because. Um, it had uh, some interesting weaknesses. As I say, you know, this is, this is allowing code from elsewhere to run on your computer. Um, uh, it's, you know, they did, they did different things with it. They did uh, ActiveX uh, technology. Um, they used Authenticode to try and uh, verify that the uh, the code, the applets, were safe, and, and of course, the applets were not safe, and uh, Authentico did not verify that they were safe, it only verified that somebody had signed the, uh, the applet. Uh, you know, so we got a digital signature situation, but that still doesn't say that the code was safe. Uh, so, you know, a, a lot of, uh, uh, problems that went on there. Um, uh, DCOM never did get used by anyone. I, as I was going around teaching these seminars, I, I started to, uh, at one point in, in uh, explaining this and the application security issues involved and uh, asking people, you know, do you use D DCOM? I only found one very specific, uh, very limited uh, program 
commercial program that actually used it. Um, there was one other uh, program uh, that did use it that I came across, but that was that was one particular agency that had programmed their own uh, system and. Uh, uh, some interesting feedback from the guy who actually knew how the, the programming worked there. But um, uh, the blaster uh, malware uh, virus, I guess it's more of a worm than, than a virus. But I had uh, an interesting experience with it um, dealing uh, with um, uh, my own work and... Uh, trying to uh, uh, get something working and, and on my <laughs> I, I keep computers far too long and my desktop computer was quite aged at the time uh, and uh, I was having trouble getting uh, something to run and Gloria said well you know why not just run it on the laptop because I had just purchased a much newer uh, laptop and so it would you know it made sense that it would be able to run uh, the, uh, the application where my desktop was having trouble. Uh, so, okay, I did that. And within two minutes, a, a little indication came up on my computer. Of course, you know, being a, a malware research guy, I knew the indication. I knew that, you know, okay, what, what exactly happened? I also knew what to do about it. Um, and so I stopped and I just collected that uh, as a sample for my zoo. But um, it is uh, a, it, you know, an interesting thing that this particular piece of malware, Blaster, used the distributed common object model. It used vulnerabilities that are part of that model and, and were sort of built into it. Um, I uh, actually, it sh I shouldn't have acted had a problem with it at all because I already knew about this and I had turned off DCOM on all of my machines. It's turned on, it's, it's enabled by default in every version of Windows. Every single version of Windows it's enabled. And in uh, every version of Windows up to uh, version 7, it was fairly easy to run DCOM config and turn it off. Uh, well, number one, version 7, uh, it becomes much more complicated to, to turn it off. Number two, um, the laptop was, was new enough that I had not yet gotten around to, uh, uh, to turning off Decon config. So, you know, needless to say, of course, I, having collected my sample, I did turn off Decon and, uh, uh, I have, you know, made it a, a, a very uh, necessary part of uh, getting a new computer from then on. But, you know, this is, this is part of the danger of having a system that allows running somebody else's uh, code on your computer. And, and sometimes you don't even know that that is enabled. 